This is April 22nd, 2009 at 9 a.m. and we are interviewing Stephen Dean in Albany, New York. He served in the United States Army from December 27, 1940 through July 17, 1945. June and Ken Hunter are conducting this interview. Please tell us your full name and when and where you were born. Well, my name is uh, Stephen Thomas Dean. Uh, Thomas is my, uh, uh, is my uh, middle name. And uh, I, have a twi I was born in Hudson, New York, uh, September 14, 1919. And I have a twin brother. He was born at the same time. And I, I don't know who is the, who came out first, but <laughs> we were both still alive yet. And uh, I, I, uh, I was born at home. I wasn't born in a hospital. I was born at home with the aid of a... Uh, midwife? What? Uh, yeah. Like a midwife or a midwife. friend? midwife. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was born at a brother. And uh, uh, I, we lived in Hudson, in 222 Robinson Street at Hudson, until I was seven years old. Uh, and uh, I went to St. Mary's Academy at the time. And uh, my grandfather and grandmother, they lived in Germantown, New York. And uh, they, they had a tenant house that they lived in. They're from Hungary. Uh, and my mother is from uh, offspring from uh, my grandfather. And uh, my uh, mother married a, a Hungarian, a George Steen. He was a uh, he, he went to agriculture college in uh, Hungary. And then uh, when he emigrated to the United States, he got a job at the U.S. Steel in uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, they they transferred him from Pennsylvania to uh, the a Portland Cement Company in Hudson, New York, uh, formerly the Atlas Cement Company, owned by a U.S. subsidiary of U.S. Steel. And uh, in the, there, he met my mother, and, and uh, they got married there. She was going, she was living uh, at the, in Germantown, New York, at the time, and. Uh, she was going to high school in Hudson, so she boarded out in, in Hudson, New York. Mm -hmm. she, and uh, and she bore uh, five children all together, mm -hmm. uh, all boys. You know, they were all, all boys. And uh, so, did all the of you go into the service? Uh, what? Did, did all all, all five boys go into the service? No. Uh, well, the, the one, the oldest one, he went in service. He had a bad back. He was discharged. He had a medical discharge. So the, the next one was the farm boy. He stayed on the farm. Peter, he was he was he took care of a farm. But, and uh, Joseph, he was killed in an auto accident. And uh, at, when he was age 21 and uh, when I when I was the age when I at age 21 uh, I was down on the farm already I we, we left I uh, when I was seven uh, at, at St. Mary's Academy when I was seven years old we moved down to uh, the farm my grandfather had a farm in, in Manhattan, New York and he, he could no longer keep it up, so we uh, moved down there mm -hmm. at the farm. It was a 80, 80 some acre farm, and uh, no, uh, we had no facilities, no mm -hmm. bathing facilities mm -hmm. at that time. Right. This was way so back. So you were all trained when you yeah. went into the yeah. army on how the, to live the, in the this, field. <laughs> this was way back in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The 26th. 
when we were nine, uh, when we moved yeah. down the farm, 1926. So now, uh, did you enlist into the service or were you drafted? I, I, uh, I, I, I was uh, called at the service, and I, I was uh, called in for uh, physical, and I was classified as 1A. In other words, elders are both to go to, to serve, and I had uh, no choice. I had uh, there was only two, my uh, twin brother and brother Peter at home, and uh, so I, I was obliged to serve. I had someone had to serve, you know, in their family. Mm -hmm. They they took care of the farm. So then, when you went into the service. Uh, where did you start your basic training? And I know you have quite a record in the service, and that's I, what we'd like to hear about. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. Uh, I took it already. I was uh, inducted. Uh, uh, although I lived in Hudson, I was inducted in the service in 19 uh, in uh, Albany, New York, here, in uh, 19, uh, 1940. Yeah. That early, 1940. Yeah. It was in 1940, it was, uh, and uh, from there we were, uh, uh, there was a group of us, uh, uh, draftees you might call us, I think we were called the draftees in those days, and I, and, and I opted for uh, three years, I, won, I signed up for three years, instead of the one year, uh, you know, which was uh, uh, the, what they wanted as a, a serve for one year. And they wouldn't have to serve any more, longer. But I opted for three years because I, I wanted to get in a location that, which I was close to home so I could uh, come home like on the weekends. And uh, so, they sent me to, I, 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 was, I didn't know at the time, but I was, I was uh, uh, they put me in as a, signed me up as a uh, uh, infantryman in the 1st Division, 18th Infantry, Infantry Regiment. And did you have training at what facility? And uh, we trained, uh, uh, first First training was at Fort Hamilton, Brooklyn. Uh, 30 days, we trained there for the basics, uh, 30 days at Fort Hamilton. What kind of training did you have as basic, it, in basics? It was a, a, just a short order training, drill instructions and uh, just drill mainly and not nothing uh, uh, no weapons or nothing just just plain short order drill they call it what happened after the 30 days where did that you get orders for another another station at 30 days with i i i found out i when i was in the first division uh, they they were first division was stationed at uh, uh, Massachusetts, over at the <clears throat> Fort Devens. Fort Devens, Massachusetts. Yeah, and uh, the whole first division, they left. They was at previously. They was at uh, Cape Riley in uh, Kansas, and they they transferred the first division over to Fort Devens, Massachusetts, and I, I was a I was put it, uh, uh, put it in uh, Company A, 18th Infantry. I had, that, that was my uh, outfit that I was in, Company A, 18th Infantry. And uh, I, w I was there when we did all kinds of training, all hikes, 18 hour hikes and 18 miles and at night and uh, hikes in the daytime 
the hikes were with the compass and, uh, and all, all, all manners of training went through gas chamber, chamber and tested for with your mustard, gas masks mustard gas and we did by bayonet to practice and uh, drill we had every weekend we had a parade drill on a parade ground, full dress parade with the band and all. Uh, every every weekend we had, uh, had some. Uh, uh, oh, there, there was always uh, someone, uh, a general of uh, some sort, uh, that we had to uh, that we were uh, to parade in front of us to. Uh, Show, show our colors too, and uh, and we we uh, I I uh, I was a I was a M1 uh, rifleman uh, we weapons. I that was my weapon was an M1 rifle, a Garand rifle, and uh, for. Uh, maybe four, maybe six months or more, and then I was. Uh, then they put me on the BAR, Browning Automatic Rifle. I, I was on that, and they had me in. Uh, I, I was a. I, I was a, almost, I, only a private at the time. And then I. I Rose the private first class while I was there, and I was drilling the troops. And uh, in, in my company, they put me on as a, a drill drill instructor, drilling them. And also, we went through the uh, uh, period of uh, taking our guns apart and blindfolded and putting them back together again. And uh, all, all kinds of training, and uh, plus uh, military training. We 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 was very seldom uh, in uh, Fort Devens. We was always out out on the maneuvers. And we was down and down and uh, we went on a uh, maneuvers off the coast of Carolina. On the ship, on the USS Ettrick, one of them was, and uh, we uh, boarded. Uh, we boarded the, at uh, Brooklyn Army Base and went down to uh, off the coast of uh, North Carolina, and uh, we we uh, we uh, un unloaded onto the Higgins boats. From out out to sea, it was about 300. Uh, well, maybe not, not not I wouldn't say 300 miles. It was a lot closer, but uh, we could see land, and uh, we boarded the Higgins boats. And uh, one moment the boat was even with your feet as you it went down the net. And then uh, next moment the, the the Higgins boat was 10 feet below you, so you had to wait as the waves come up and up at the boat. That, uh, that was the time to uh, uh, jump down into the boat. And uh, so we, uh, we uh, got on the boats and headed for shore, and we fought down there. We went through the uh, uh, Fort Benning, uh, in uh, North Carolina, before we went through Fort Bragg, we was fought with the troops down there. Just mil military exercises. The planes come over and drop bags of flour as we went through, you know, with regular military exercise. Well, we did that three different times on the different sh ships. Off the way, went off the coast of uh, Virginia, 
uh, at the uh, okay, I can't, I thought I cannot think of the name, it was in, in Virginia. We, uh, we, we got off the, our boats and, and uh, made an amphibious landing there. Must have been at Little Creek, Virginia? Yeah, good. Little Creek, Virginia. That's the thing. And, uh, and, uh, I we maneuvered there, and uh, while we was at, then uh, we maneuvered down below, further on down, and uh, we had uh, exercises and uh, off the off of the ship, the shore. So uh, we invaded the, at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, and we uh, was a. Uh, out there in maneuvers and there for a couple of weeks. And uh, we come back, uh, we could come back by a convoy all the way from uh, Georgia up to uh, back to Fort Evans. Uh, at one time we went down, we went on maneuver, we went by a Pullman car uh, and uh, we ended up down in Florida Cape Landing, Florida, and uh, we maneuvered down there to Cape Landing, and we stayed there for a while, and from there we came back, back up to Indian Town Gap, and uh, from Indian Town Gap is when I I got the orders. I uh, I applied for uh, officers training training school at. Uh, Indian Town Gap, and and uh, I got the, before we before we left. Uh, we were well uh, I, while I was there too. We also camped at uh, uh, when we come by a convoy. We uh, camped overnight at Gettysburg on the hill where the battle was fought at Gettysburg, mm -hmm. and we pitched tents there overnight. When I woke up in the morning, it was underwater. It, it rained all night long, and the rain come down the hill and <laughs> soaked mm. us all. You know, mm. it, it was it, it no. quick. It came on quickly. Can you recall where you were when uh, war was declared? Well, when I when, when it was declared, we was. Uh, I'm uh, trying to try and think now. Like, uh, we, uh, we was, uh, I think we, uh, we was en uh, uh, route. Uh, uh, we, we went over. We went over to England on the Queen Mary. It, uh, it, had, it hadn't been converted over to a troop ship yet. It was still a luxury line there, mm -hmm. and we left there and uh, from Indian Town Gap. And uh, I, I, I got orders uh, that uh, I, I had been accepted for officer's training. And, uh, and, uh, and the company commander called and said that, that my orders are down at the headquarters and that they would be sent up to me before, uh, before long. Well, anyway, I never received them because we moved out and headed for England. And we went down to Brooklyn Army Base, got up Queen Mary, and went went to England. And uh, we were stationed at Tidworth Barracks in London, outside London. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we maneuvered up there in Scotland with the British up in the Moor Woods up there. We was on maneuvers up there. And uh, you asked me a question before. I, I can't remember what. Where it was. Where, well, where well, you were when, when the war was it was announced <coughs> that they declared war? 
Well, I said, let's see, uh, that was at, at when Pearl, or Pearl Harbor, when Pearl Harbor uh, was uh, uh, attacked by the Japan. That, that's when uh, that's when we first heard about it. But uh, we was we was already on route from uh, from England down to North Africa when uh, we heard uh, the president announce a speech over the radio that war had been declared uh, with the with the Japs and the, and uh, we were, we was aiding the British. Uh, we we our our destination was North Africa, Operation Torch in North Africa, and we invaded North Africa at Algeria, and uh, it took us. Well, we had we must have been about 800 ships and all in the convoy that left uh, England, and uh, we had destroyers, Liberty ships, and uh, our submarines, everything. We had all kinds of protection going down, because it took us a long while to get down there. We left, uh, I think in June, and we got down there, it was, uh, it was this was already November, when we heard about uh, Pearl Harbor, and then uh, and uh, November uh, when we got down to North Carolina, not down to went through the Mediterranean Sea, past the past Gibraltar. Yeah, past Gibraltar, the Mediterranean Sea, and down to Algeria, and we was off the coast of Algeria. Uh, and uh, and we, uh, I, I, I was a, uh, uh, we we got down there. When I I was down there, I was on uh, one of the one of these uh, landing craft, and uh, we was headed for the shore for Operation Torch on uh, uh, North Africa. That was our operation, and uh, well, we, uh, I, I was in the turret of the, of the landing craft because I, I was a BAR gunner, and I was on the watch out, and uh, all the fellows were huddled down uh, behind the, uh, the, in the opening the gate. gate. Yeah, behind the gate. They were huddled down there, ready to, when they lowered the gate, and we was going to take off, and uh, so when the, when the landing craft got to shore in Algeria, and that's when uh, 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 we had, had no opposition whatsoever. It was it was it was the funniest thing. Uh, we uh, we got off. We were knee deep. Well, we was almost waist deep in the water. And to get the shore, we had to wait a, almost wait a, or wait the shore. But when we got to the shore, we went up, up and uh, we uh, had no op found, have found no opposition. Nobody was waiting for us there. Uh, but. Uh, we could hear gunfire up to the left of us, uh, north, north of us. But that was a uh, company B. Well, we was uh, I was in company A, and uh, they 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 had a little opposition up at company B. And uh, so we uh, went inland. Wait, we, we tried. It was this is this was two o'clock. Uh, two or three o'clock in the morning when we made the invasion. We went through a small town. It was quiet. All you could hear was dogs barking. Uh, a little town called Apple. 
then uh, we kept on going and kept going inland. And all, all of a sudden, uh, we come across uh, a family that was living down there. Uh, I, I don't know whether they were uh, whether they were uh, uh, connected with our invasion or not, but they come out and gave us instructions what lay ahead of us. And there was a town called St. Cloud that was ahead of us. And uh, meanwhile, there was a French uh, come along uh, our, our patrol on a, with a motorcycle and sidecar. They come through and uh, they saw us and they got so scared they run off the road, you know. So we captured them, we took, took them. Then uh, as we got closer to... Uh, now these Frenchmen were uh, uh, allied with the uh, Germans? With the Germans. They, they were, were the, the Vichy? They, they were allied with the Germans. Yeah, and that's, that's the troop. First troops we come to was the, the, the Italians. And they surrendered right away. They was tickled to death. In other words, they didn't want to fight. So we took them back, back on the line. And, and uh, then, uh, then as we went along, uh, I, I, was a, I, I was in front, I was a, uh, ahead. And uh, what, uh, as a point, point man, uh, to observe as we went along. And, uh, Soon we came to the town of St. Cloud, and uh, immediately they opened fire. Oh my gosh! It was and they pinned us down. We we couldn't do anything. We couldn't move because we were pinned down. And the uh, only fire, only only vision that. They could see would be from the, there was a church uh, tower overlooking the road, the highway all the way down. So we, we figured that's, that's where the, all the fire was coming from. We, we, we were losing men right and left. And, and so we called back for uh, artillery fire and uh, we got we got, they, we got a response from them, but the, the, they, uh, they didn't get the right estimate, and then they were, the, the, the artillery was right amongst us. In other words, it was going amongst us. It wasn't the right estimate. So then we had, had, had to give it a, no, another reading that uh, 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 they were firing on us instead of the enemy, and uh, it, it happened. So, I, so that they 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 they, they fired more rounds after that the artillery, and uh, we we got to. Uh, we, we got uh, over to, uh, there was a cemetery outside of St. Cloud. We got there and offered us a little protection, but we still get gun, gunfire. Our captain was wounded, the lieutenant was killed, for the first lieutenant, Lieutenant Taft. And he fresh out of, uh, 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 of the academy, he, he was fresh out of the academy, and he he, he just just uh, the, he he was right up in the front, and he, he got killed, and uh, and then then uh, circled around. It's almost like a dream, you know. Uh, here here we're fighting, yeah yeah. Only, only visible thing you 
could see was the church because the oh, city of uh, St. Cloud or the town uh, was uh, all enclosed in a concrete wall and all they had was just uh, uh, porticos uh, like doorways that they could fire from and uh, you you could you could be firing at the doorway and you, you wouldn't know what you was, whether you were hitting anybody or not. So uh, we had to concentrate on the, the steeple, on the on the church. And uh, I, was, I was going around the turn, around the uh, a city. Oh, I was about maybe 300 yards outside our, around the perimeter of the, of the city. And I, all it gets to, it's, it's almost like the swarm of bees coming over my head. I hear the bullets, boy, they were hit, hit and they're going past me. And uh, I, 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 I was, as I was going around, I never, was, never looked on the ground. Here they had wires. There was a bunch of wires going ahead this way. And I, I tripped over one of the wire, and uh, the gun, gunfire stopped. They stopped firing at me because they, they, they had me in their sights. And if it wasn't that, for that, that I tripped, uh, I, I think I would've, they would have got me with a shot. So I just laid there and uh, I looked around. I uh, looked at the, uh, listened to where the gunfire was coming from, and uh, and uh, safe to sway around. So I, just, as I laid there, they stopped firing at me. So. Uh, I, I, after a while, I, I got up and I raced, raced across. I knew what, look, uh, I, I knew the wires weren't there anymore. So I went around the wire, around the other side of town. When I got around the other side of town, uh, the, Fr the French had given up. The other, other part of our group had. Uh, contact with the French, and uh, they surrendered in that town, in that town uh, of St. Cloud. And uh, the next, next day we had to go back, go back and uh, pick up the dead and uh, weapons, and whatever we could salvage, and uh, move, on, move on from there. We, uh, we, uh, we took captured all the uh, French. They uh, capitulated in that town. In other words, they gave up. And uh, the town of, uh, we took the town over and they captured all the French. There was only one, a uh, few Germans there. They were there uh, instructing the French on what to do. Uh, the Africa Corps. They were. They weren't. Uh, they weren't there at the time. Uh, we contacted them later. We had to go to. Uh, uh, we had to go to Morocco. We had uh, the uh, French were still uh, fighting there. In other words, they they didn't know the war was over for them. So in the French Morocco. And uh, so we had to go over there and uh, and uh, stop them from, uh, in other words, they met, surrendered over there in Morocco. And uh, then we came back. We came back to Kesserine Pass. And, and uh, that, that was uh, down below, uh, to, uh, below Blow Tunis. It was a road, a highway headed headed up toward Hill 709. They call it 
in Tunis, outside of Tunis. And the road, this road was, you could see for miles, straight ahead. As we, as we approached this uh, Kasserine Pass, there was a French, uh, there was a, uh, the British, the British troops were, uh, they were withdrawing from the, the, the held six, uh, held seven, seven or nine. They were withdrawing because they, they just couldn't do it. Uh, the, the Germans had the, they, they had the, been fighting the Germans all the way up to 709. You could see along the roads, there was a wrecked car and tanks and uh, all kinds of vehicles. And we, we didn't have any uh, water in our canteens, so we had to drain the water out of these demolished cars and uh, put some chlorine tab tablets in to maybe purify it, you know, so we had something to drink. And, uh, and uh, meanwhile, all the while, uh, the uh, British were coming, were coming back, and they were saying, good luck, fellows, I hope we hope you make it. And, you know, they were withdrawing, and it was our turn to go up and uh, try to take seven of them nine. So, uh, <coughs> well, so we, uh, we, we uh, got together. We, we uh, uh, started started up the up that road, uh, and we was uh, in a. Olive Grove, and I, I was, I was promoted to corporal long before. After uh, uh, we had a, the barrel at St. Cloud, they had had to lost so many men, they had to replace them, and so that's when I was promoted to corporal, and uh, and. Uh, so I, I had to take a, uh, we par parked uh, our gear and everything in an olive grove uh, uh, outside of, uh, outside of the hill 709. And then bombers came by, dropped a few uh, German bomb bombers, dropped a few bombs in there. and. Uh, they were way off target, and we they nowhere, nowhere near her. And uh, and uh, I I had to take a group out. We we were bivouac there for the night, and I I had to take a group out, a scouting group, and uh, we went out scout, scouting around the territory, thing. and uh, we could come up on an orchard, orange orchard. It was beautiful, great big oranges, like uh, grapefruit. And, uh, and uh, on that one end of the orchard was an area sitting in a chair like this here with a gun over his lap, fast asleep. So I said to the fellow, I said, I said, fill his shirts up with oranges. We took him back to camp. So we did. We, we we filled the shirts up with oranges, and we took them back to camp. And uh, the fellow never woke up, and uh, so he didn't miss anything. <laughs> All these few oranges, oh, well, they were great. They were wonderful. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, on the day. Uh, in the morning, we were supposed to attack Hill 709. This was December the 23rd, we, uh, uh, 1942. Uh, 1942, yeah. We was uh, supposed to attack Hill 709. 
and then we dug in underneath the 709, we dug fox, fox holes. We got up to the, uh, to the base of the hill that we were supposed to go up. And then, whoa, it was terrible. All night long, they were bombarding us with you know, artillery shells and mortar fire. All, long, all night long, you know, and we was in our foxholes. And uh, luckily, we were close enough to the mountain that the, all the artillery, artillery shells were going beyond us. So uh, we were, that way, we, we were lucky. But uh, uh, and when morning approached, the two o'clock, we, we got orders to advance up the hill. It was nice and clear uh, down in the, in the valley where we were. But as we went up the hill, it started to get foggy. Fog, fog started moving in. And uh, we kept going up, going up. And, uh, and uh, my squad, we was it was one of the first squads in our company to go up, and uh, as we went up the hill, we could hear gunfire to our left, and uh, in other words, uh, all the other part of our company had uh, met resistance, and uh, but it was still so foggy you couldn't you couldn't see, yeah, you didn't know. Who, who was who? And uh, as, as we grown up, uh, my my squad, we went up, and uh, as soon as we got up to the top of the hill, they had no choice. They 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 got captured, and uh, my my buddy next to me, uh, he, he he was uh, only about five feet away from me. He got a bullet right through his helmet, right into his skull. He turned blue all, all. He now was to kill him instantly. I, I was going to go over to the side and check on him, and then you know, another shot rang out. And just, just screamed by him. I could feel like heat in the bullet as it went uh, grazed my face. I could feel it. And, and uh, looked up, here, here it was, poised, ready to shoot again. Uh, one of these uh, Africa Corps Germans, uh, you can see Africa Corps on his uniform. He, he, and he muttered something, which was uh, actually, I think, I guess, give up or whatever. He said something in German. <coughs> so I, I laid my gun down. I saw it useless. And then, um, so he did. He he did, he led me up the hill. We got to the top of the hill. All you could see was just so wet. You couldn't see. You didn't, you didn't know who who was up there. That's why. That's why we we couldn't fire from down at all because we thought we was fire. We'd be firing at our own men because it was so uh, soupy, just like soup, like pig soup. Well, so we had no choice. Uh, we we had to with all the fire and uh, hide behind big boulders as we went up. But then when I got after I got captured, then they, were, they led me up to the top of the hill. And I saw the rest of them on, buddies that were still alive. I uh, saw them, they were all captured already, and they had them lined up. And uh, they had a, a monstrous cannon. It was uh, in, inside this, this like a mountain up there on top of it. Hill 709. It was a, about a 30 foot long.
cannon, and they could shoot. They could shoot right down that highway if they wanted to. You know, and they that was some of the armament that they had up there. And uh, well, then they uh, they got us all together, together, and uh, we had to march all the way eight eight, eight on. Often. This was early in the morning, and um, all day long we didn't get to uh, Tunis until oh, about seven or eight o'clock at night. They this was also it. Christmas time. Almost to the end, December twenty-third. That was when I got you. Yeah, I was got you December twenty-third, nineteen forty-two. And how yeah. long were you captured for? Pardon? How long were you a POW? I was a POW for nine, uh, nine months. I was missing in action for three months. My mother got a telegram, yeah, mm -hmm. which you got there. She got the telegram that, uh, and it, it took about three months for communication to arrive in the United States. Now, they, how did they get you to a prison camp? How? Okay. Uh, they, uh, uh, oh, and we, we were in that stable. They had us in a stable in Tunis on uh, Christmas Day. We was in a stable and we had uh, <coughs> we had uh, a 50 gallon drop with, with a cow's head boiling inside there. And uh, that was our meal for Christmas Day. It was a soup. 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 Yeah, and uh, well, we were, we, and uh, the next day we was interrogated by an officer, uh, uh, it was either 24th or 25th. Uh, uh, we uh, were interrogated by, and this officer, he, that interrogated us, he knew he knew who we, who we were, what outfit, and everything else. All you had to give was a, your name, rank, and serial number. He didn't even care about that because he said, he said after we went to war, he said, I grew up in the United States out west. He says, and after we win the war, I want to go back because I like it out there. And, uh, they didn't give any, in other words, they weren't rough or nothing. So you, you were taken uh, from Tunis and put on an Italian destroyer? I, yeah, I was put on a, from Tunis. They took us uh, to a, the way it was a, on a tin can, I call it, but an <coughs> Italian destroyer. They took us over to Messina. And from Messina, we went over to Sicily, the PG-90, uh, PG-98, up in the mountains in Sicily. We was there for 28 days up in Sicily. <coughs> and from Sicily, they, they, they took us to, uh, back into Italy, we, we had to go uh, by, uh, boat to Italy, and, and uh, from Italy they, we went by cattle car up to, uh, up past Rome, at the Savagliano, to this uh, prison camp, PG-59, uh, Savagliano, they call it. And uh, that, that's where, that's where, where I stayed, well, I was a prisoner of war for nine months. Now, during that nine-month period, did you ever have any visits by the Red Cross? Uh, yeah, after three months, the Red Cross moved to come in. We got uh, maybe a couple par parcels, uh, Red Cross parcels. After about three months, they discovered where we were. Uh, they come in and they uh, uh, gave us some parcels. Uh, and uh, 
the uh, guards. They got what they wanted out of the parcels, and we got what was left, which was maybe a pair of socks, and, and uh, maybe a, my, could be a candy bar, whatever, very little. In other words, they rummaged through it before we got it all of it. I assume you had hard labor continuing in the prison camp. You had to do work for the Germans. They had us all. We was knee deep in it. This was in the spring, anyway, and we was knee deep in mud. Uh, what uh, carrying large boulders, uh, and uh, we had to build fortifications around the camp. They wanted to fortify the camp. We had to carry these large boulders, and uh, if, you, if you stumble or something, you did you butt, butt you with a rifle, you know, give you a rifle butt. <coughs> but uh, 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 while we was doing it, one of the guys uh, got a uh, spinal man. Spinal meningitis or something. They they had they, they had inoc inoculators. They uh, they stuck needles in into us and and instead of in the arm, they uh, give it to us in the breast so we could continue working. Continue working, you know. And uh, it gave us some. Purple stuff they stuck up on their tongue, uh, whatever it was, uh, something it was supposed to. So the camp was run by Germans or Italians? It was run by uh, by uh, Italians, but I think it was supervised by, uh, by Germans. But uh, Italians were running, running it. And was and so treatment was much easier than if it was strictly German control. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, the, the Italians were pretty lenient except for the three months. And, and then when the Red Cross moved in, that's when the, the work stopped. You know, they, they, we, they stopped us from uh, doing any hard mm -hmm. labor. Now, to, to eight, the, the Italians, I understand, had a part in helping you to escape. They yeah. came in and, uh, and uh, gave liquor to the guards? They, they got the guards drunk. They, this was, uh, <coughs> well, 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 I, well I, I was in hut number one, for one thing. Now. And uh, at night, when they, at night, the bed bugs were so dug on, pick, they crawled all over you. And at daytime they disappeared, you didn't see a one. But at night they come out in droves. And they and they fed us once a day. We had got fed one, uh, one meal a day with a bowl of soup out of uh, some kind of uh, greens. They, they made the soup out of it. They gave, gave that to us and a, a loaf, loaf of bread. This, this bread was um, made out of sand and glass and everything else. They stuck everything into it. I have a recipe here uh, of, the, of that, uh, of that uh, glass that they, uh, of the bread that they made. I had a recipe here somewhere. You took off from there by yourself, or were there how many men escaped? Over a thousand? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, the Germans were being, uh, after nine months, the Germans were being driven out of North Africa. Finally, uh, they were finally being driven out. They were coming in at Naples, and they wanted to clean the camp out. They wanted to empty out the camp. And, uh, and, and the people got wind of it, 
you know, a, a, a news goes fast around, you know, the news travels fast. And they, they found out that the Germans were headed for Naples to come up and clean out the camp. Well, they got the guards drunk and they opened the gates up uh, on uh, September 14th on my, on my birthday. Uh, that was my birthday. And they opened the gates up and I, we all took off headed for the hills. Every which way. And I, I was so weak, I only, I only got about three miles. But uh, I was, uh, I, I was, uh, <coughs> I, I and one buddy of mine, he was from Brooklyn, and uh, he, he, uh, he could understand Italian, and, uh, which I couldn't. But he he's a, was a, of a Italian descent, and he, he we come to uh, come to the one farmhouse, and uh, at that night uh, they gave us some bread, uh, some pani bread and cheese, cheese, and then that day, and they said they didn't they told us to move on. You know, because they were, they were afraid of the Germans, and uh, so the following following day, after we escaped, uh, we could hear gunshots down. At, it was the camp. We could hear gunshots. So Pete and I, I went up one tree. Pete went up another tree, and we stayed up in that tree all day long. long. Oh, we was up in a tree while the Germans were picking up the guys, the poor guys that uh, couldn't find cover. And then they were even marching them. We could see them marching underneath our trees. They never looked up. But uh, they, what, we uh, escaped, escaped and then toward nightfall. We stayed up there all day. We didn't go down out of that tree until nightfall. And there was a house up on a hill at that point. And we went up to the up to the house there and they said that there was an officer in there that day looking over the countryside with the binoculars. And they they gave us something to some food and they advised us not to stay. And move on. So, eventually then you uh, so met uh, a British patrol. Huh? Yeah, eventually you met a British patrol and they helped you get back to the American lines. Oh yeah, that was nine months after. Yeah. And you, so yeah. you're on the run for nine months. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the, on the run for nine months. I stayed with this Italian family. I had a hole in the ground. I stayed in the hole in the ground for three months. And I got rain. I, one night I woke up and it was pouring rain. I was under water. The rain had come down and, and, and washed me right out. I had to, I got out and the thing caved in as soon as I got out. And uh, luckily there was a little hunting shack, six by six hunting shack in this woods where the Petroni, he used to hunt pigeons, the boss that owned them all this land, yeah, and uh, so, so uh, I went on a hunt, hunting check after the rain was over, then I had to dig me a, another hole, and uh, I had to dig another hole, in, and, and uh, every time the Germans were combing in the area, uh, I had to jump, go get down in that hole. Well, unfortunately, our, our time is running out. And I know that after your service there, you served at the White House, and you mentioned how the First Lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, would invite you over to the White House when you were off duty for uh, movies and refreshments. Mm -hmm. And you really had, and you've won, been awarded several medals and decorations. 
And I know there's more to your story, but unfortunately, time runs out. And I want to thank you so much for serving our country. And it was an honor to meet you. You're welcome.